Welcome to Statics. Addition of a system of coplanar forces and Cartesian vector notation. The problem solving approaches that we have discussed so far are the parallelogram law and triangle construction. These work well, but they are limited in their use. They are really designed for working with problems that are limited to a system of two forces. If you try to extend these methods to systems of three or more vectors, you will find the math quickly becomes complicated and is error prone. So the methods that we are going to review now are much more general. First, let's discuss horizontal and vertical components, and then we'll discuss basic two-dimensional Cartesian vector notation. Solving vector problems using these methods will be preferred going forward. First, vector, horizontal, and vertical components. Let's say we have two force vectors, A and B, and we want to add them together to get a resultant vector. The first step is to resolve the forces into horizontal and vertical components. The yellow lines will represent AX, the horizontal component of A, and AY, the vertical component of A. The green lines represent BX, the horizontal component of B, and BY, the vertical component of B. Next, we add like components together. First, X components. We add AX and BX to get the red component of the resultant vector. Next, the Y components. AY and BY are in opposite directions, with AY a little bigger. The net result is the red, short, y-direction component for the resultant vector in the positive y-direction. To summarize, I've summed the x-components and I've summed the y-components, and that is what is shown with my two red arrows. The square root of the sum of the squares of the resultant components, using the Pythagorean theorem, will give me the resultant vector shown here. Now, to find these components analytically, we need some basic trigonometry tools. Everything here is based upon right angles. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. The opposite and adjacent sides are relative to a given angle. If we consider the angle shown as theta, the opposite side is the side opposite of theta, and the adjacent side is the side that makes the angle theta with the hypotenuse. With these relationships, we can state that the tangent of theta is a ratio of the opposite side length to the adjacent side length. The sine of theta is the ratio of the opposite side length to the hypotenuse length, and the cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side length to the hypotenuse length. Also, the Pythagorean theorem can be used to find lengths of one side if the other two sides are known. Let's look at this topic now in terms of force components. If we have a force, F, oriented relative to an x-axis by the angle theta, we can find the horizontal component, f sub x, and the vertical component, f sub y. Since fx and fy form a right angle, we can find them using the trigonometry tools just discussed. To find f sub x, we would multiply the magnitude of f by the cosine of angle theta, since f sub x is adjacent side with respect to that angle. To find f sub y, we would multiply the magnitude of f by the sine of angle theta, because it forms the side opposite of the angle theta. If we already knew the components f sub x and f sub y, then we could find the magnitude of the resultant using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's suppose that instead of the angle theta, we have the angle alpha instead. Because alpha is adjacent to the y direction leg, Finding the x and y components is slightly different from before. To find f sub x, which is opposite of alpha, we use f times the sine of alpha. To find f sub y, which is adjacent to alpha, we use f times the cosine of alpha. Here is a summary of the steps we use to determine the resultant of several coplanar forces. First, resolve forces into x and y components using the trigonometry functions just discussed. Keep track of the directions, positive versus negative x and positive versus negative y, for each component. Next, collect all the x terms in one group and add them together using standard scalar algebra. Do the same for the y terms. 
The resulting sums are the x and y components of the resultant force. Use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude of the resultant force. Use the tangent formula discussed above to find the direction of the vector. This procedure is demonstrated in the accompanying example problem videos. Finally, let's discuss Cartesian vector notation. Cartesian vector notation is a convenient way to define a vector using its x and y components. This notation is simply just a compact way of representing the same information that we were just doing previously with the x and y components. Here's an example of what an equation might look like. A couple things to point out here. First is the i and j. These are what we call unit vectors. The i represents the x direction and the j represents the y direction. What that means is that we'll only put x-related terms in front of the i and y-related terms in front of the j. So the notation can represent both x and y components in one compact equation. The term unit means that i and j are both equal to 1 in their corresponding directions and are multiplied by the corresponding scalar magnitudes of f sub x and f sub y. The magnitudes of f sub x and f sub y can be found as just described previously. So to use Cartesian notation, we will take each force vector and break it into its x and y components and put them in this notation format. The terms themselves are going to be the same values as they were with the previous method. It's just written down a little bit differently and a little bit more compact form. Once the vectors are in this form, the like terms can be summed individually to get the same result as the previous method. As you will come to appreciate, using vector notation will greatly simplify three-dimensional problems. Now see how these concepts are applied in the corresponding example videos.